Okay, so uh, just to confirm, my name's Rebecca McDonald and I'm here uh, hosting the uh, platform stream this afternoon. I am really excited to introduce our next speaker. I've had the privilege of knowing Dasit for a few years now, um, and this is going to be his fourth time presenting at API Days. Uh, he has predominantly worked in the Microsoft stack, and now he utilizes Azure and AWS offerings to design and deliver cloud native solutions. Uh, Dasit is a seasoned speaker, and his previous talks are all hosted in his blog, uh, dasit.me. Um, in addition, he's also a competitive battlefield player and represented Australia at the international level. Well done. Um, so, joining us from Microsoft, please welcome Dasit Widges. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, I'll start sharing my screen now. Uh, hopefully, everyone can see it. And uh, good afternoon or good morning, uh, wherever in the world you're joining us from. I'm in uh, lockdown in Melbourne at the moment, so it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to participate in an international conference from the comfort of my own home. I'm pretty sure everyone feels the same. Um, and welcome to my talk, Tracing Across Your Distributed Process Boundaries. Uh, using open telemetry. Uh, like Rebecca said, this is my fourth time at AP Days and I've been talking about distributed systems and this is kind of, kind of continuing on that theme. And this year, the uh, theme for the conference is accelerating digital. So for me, this means uh, we need to thrive on, uh, on the cloud. We can no longer be content just being having a presence on the cloud. And part of, part of that means that we need to have good observability. We are building more and more uh, distributed systems now. And what separates the good teams from the average teams is this observability aspect, in my opinion. So in this talk, we'll cover some of the modern challenges about this building the distributed systems and some modern solutions as well. Um, so, for folks who don't know me, my name's Dasit Vijayasurvadana. I know my surname is a mouthful. I'm an application development consultant specializing in that field. I'm currently working for Microsoft, and I've been based in Melbourne, Australia for about a decade now. And I have get to work with enterprise clients, medium to small clients, startups, a good cross-section of teams. And I have a good understanding of what works in the field, what's uh, what doesn't work as well, what's in the radar. And as a, a technology consultant, I need to be abreast of what's coming up next. And especially in this observability field, I think we need to take notice of open telemetry. It's going to be the next big thing if it isn't already. Uh, as a result, I want to introduce the concept to folks that might not know it firsthand. Uh, this talk is more of a technical one. I'll uh, focus my tone and my examples uh, to a technical audience, but even if you're a product manager, you'll see some value in this. So let's go ahead. So uh, like I said, I want to do an introduction to distributed tracing and open telemetry, uh, and then uh, amalgamate those concepts together in how uh, open telemetry solves the challenges of distributed tracing. And in the end, hoping that uh, the demo gods are happy with me and I can show you a nice demo. Um, and also stay, if you stay till then, there's a, a, a nice giveaway uh, of some Azure credits. So let's, let's see how many people <laughs> stay. Um, so let's set the context. Um, I found this uh, quote. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Uh, Peter Drucker, what he means here is that you have to set, uh, set yourself a, a trackable goal, uh, only with a clearly established metric for success. You can quantify progress and adjust your process to produce the desired outcomes. Uh, for software development teams, there's a means different things. I'm, I'm going to post this, these questions to you. Think about this in your own time. Uh, let's assume this scenario. Someone comes to you and says, uh, hey, uh, microservices are running slow. This particular service is 
taking up a lot of CPU and memory. But do you know, how do you know whether it's actually running slow? Do you have a metric to say what's you what's the usual, what's the normal? Uh, and if a product manager comes to you and says, are people using that feature that we developed? So those are the kind of questions you need to be able to answer when you're in the cloud environment, because you can't be using your imagination to solve problems that don't exist. And this factors into architecture as well. As you know, architecture is all about trade-offs. And if you make the wrong decisions on without having evidence, this can lead to uh, a lot of costly mistakes and also it might increase time to market, which is in, the, in this competitive world, might as well be giving up. So distributed traces or this observability concept allows you to have those answers that you need to make uh, fact-based decisions. And this is why a product manager might be interested in this as well. So distributed tracing, what do I mean by this? Uh, let's let's set the context and what, what distributed tracing means to this environment. So this is, uh, uh, definition I found on the Open Telemetry website. It's a short one, but uh, very well put. Uh, it it uh, captures the essence of distributed tracing. And the thing I want you to remember is they are building more distributed systems now than we did 10 years ago. And especially with microservices like architectures. And on a good day, it's difficult to diagnose and resolve availability of performance issues. On a bad day, nearly impossible. And the key here is to have good observability of your distributed systems. And distributed traces give you, uh, your software teams, the ability to cut through the complexity and the white noise to focus on what you want when something goes wrong. Um, and this is why uh, software teams can or want to be able to use distributed traces to quickly analyze what happens to requests as they transit through your uh, pieces or your services. So let's take an example. I want to drive home this message. Um, think of this as a very crude example of a distributed system. Application makes a HTTP request, a API gateway uh, then routes it to your middleware, which then uh, does some processing, saves it to a database, uh, publishes some messages to a uh, broker, which get uh, gets processed in a backend, and then it writes some state as well. Now, in this scenario, the single request resulted in a workflow that was both might be synchronous and asynchronous. There's a lot of things happening here. If something were to go wrong with this request, we need to cut out all the other noise from all the other requests, just focus on this. Uh, how would you do it in your current system? One of the ways of doing this, and a traditional way of doing this, is we look for something unique in the request and try to find the logs. Now, you assume that all your logs are in one place. OK, that's good. Then you assume there's something unique for that request. OK, good. And then. Uh, Hopefully, you log enough contextual information to stitch it all together. But even if all of those things are true, imagine how long this takes to do. And when your production systems are on fire, this is the last thing you want to do, spend time trying to visualize everything. So it turns out logs are not the best tool for this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing logs or depreciating the value of logs. Certainly has its place. But for distributed tracing, maybe there's a better way of doing it. So this is a, a another view of your distributed system, a component map. Um, and even the simplest distributed systems can get uh, a, a, might look like this in, in the real world. And what you want to be able to do is, for a particular request, have, have this type of uh, focus on where a request went through, how it how it traversed your components, and how each component performed, how long it took, and this is the kind of thing that Open Telemetry promises us. This is an example of the same thing um, displayed in a temporal manner. You can see how long each component took 
in the context of that uh, the trace request and uh, the contextual information captured as well. This is the kind of thing we need. Uh, and this is another view of uh, multiple requests used to stitch up a component diagram with dependencies. This is the kind of rich information that open telemetry gives. And if it wasn't clear already, this is exactly the kind of tool we want to do tracing. And Zipkin in this example is just one of many that supports open telemetry. Another popular one, which I'm sure you've heard of is called Jaeger. So if your operation team already has a tool to capture tracing information, the chances are open telemetry already supports it. So before we go to talking about open telemetry, I want to uh, look at the modern landscape and see why distributed tracing is having this emphasis, this big uh, aura about it suddenly. We've been doing tracing for a while. Why, why, are, why is everyone talking about this now? So it turns out we're, we're building more things that run on the cloud. Yeah, duh. But um, then we are also building these microservices architectures managed by many teams. That means polyglot environments, many frameworks, languages, uh, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. Uh, we can no longer rely on a solution provided by a cl single cloud vendor. We need a vendor neutral solution, vendor agnostic solution. And we can't rely on a framework uh, specific solution either, because what if you're developing a microservice in a different language? So this is uh, this is the kind of environment that uh, uh, advocates for having a shared common understanding, a single worldview of tracing and observability. And one thing many people don't realize is we build everything on open source technologies now. And those same libraries and technologies need to participate in the single worldview of observability. When something goes wrong, you can you can't just treat those open source libraries as a black box. You need to look at the traces coming from those as well. And this is the environment. This is the world in which, in which open telemetry was born. Uh, traditionally, telemetry data has been provided by either open source projects or commercial vendors. But like I alluded to, the key problem here is lack of standardization. Open telemetry was formed to two projects, open census and open tracing. They were trying to solve similar issues and came together and formed open telemetry. And open telemetry solves the problem of uh, uh, lack of standardization by providing a single Venn diagnostic solution. Uh, it's already got broad industry support from uh, all the major cloud vendors, uh, end users, and uh, providers of telemetry software. And uh, this is important because let's be honest, if all of those major windows didn't come together, we wouldn't have a uh, open telemetry project to talk about. It's the open standard that's the winner here. And I was pleasantly surprised how well adopted this was when I first got into it. Every kind of integration I was looking for, it was already there. So uh, what does open telemetry provide? Uh, I like to think of open telemetry not as a tool, but as a standard. Uh, it's a set of APIs, SDKs, tooling and integrations to create and manage telemetry, uh, things like traces, metrics, and logs. Uh, you can then uh, collect those uh, telemetry data from the software you write in a Venn diagnostic way. And not only that, then you can forward that to a variety of analysis tools like Zipkin, Jaeger, Prometheus, your choice, basically. Uh, Open Telemetry is a part of the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. That means it, it's got a lot of uh, momentum and a lot of support from the industry. It's beta across several languages at the moment, but expect general availability pretty soon. It might be a few weeks away even. Uh, as I said, the broad support for open telemetry means that any kind of major language or framework you can think of, it already supports. Um, and it also supports a variety of popular open source projects. So instrumentation 
for popular projects are already taken up by the open telemetry maintainers and the communities really uh, providing a lot of extension points to open telemetry. Um, so let's go into a bit more technical details now. Um, I want to talk about this thing called the span. The reason is if, if you're reading anything related to open telemetry, you're going to come across uh, this term span. Uh, it, span simply represents a operation or an activity you want traced. For example, think of making a call to an API or persisting something to the database. This act, these activities are what we call spans. So let's look at it more. But before we go, go learn about the span, I want to talk about briefly on the architecture of open telemetry. Open telemetry has two pillars that it's built on. Um, one is uh, signals, and the other is context propagation. The uh, signal, uh, again, breaks up into three parts, tracing, which we'll talk about today, metrics, and baggage. And context propagation is the mechanism that allows us to separately and uniquely identif identify one trace from the other as the traces traverse through and maintain the relationship between spans. Well, well how does uh, it really uh, maintain the relationship? So in open telemetry, tracing is defined by or implicitly defined by spans. Uh, within a single trace, there can be multiple spans which have a parent-child relationship with a single root. So it kind of looks like a tree. Uh, if you go to the very top of the uh, very grandparent, you can see all the relationships going down for a single trace. Uh, let's look at, a, uh, look at how that looks in a observability software. So those relationships can be looked at in a casual way or in a temporal way. In a temporal relationship, you have this nice time graph uh, and uh, start and times and all the children and how they relate to the overall trace in context of when they started and finished. On, a, on the other hand, if you look at the casual relationship, you can see this directed acyclic graph or DAG where you can see the hierarchical relationships. So to drive home this message, let's look at another quick example. So take this uh, example of a client app making a HTTP request to its backend component. So the trace ID for this is one, and obviously this is the root span. So this is the root activity. We don't have any parent for this. Now it makes the call, and because we propagate the context, context being the trace ID and the span ID, we, when we create the next activity, the subactivity it knows the parent. It knows the context in which this is created. And likewise, any further subactivities know, knows its immediate parent and the trace. This is very powerful, and this is how we can stitch everything together. And this is what open telemetry provides. So how does it know? What kind of information does the context have? So the context has things like the trace ID. This is the unique ID that identifies the trace a span ID, uh, which is unique to this span, the parent activity, uh, trace flags, and trace state, which gives information about, additional information about the trace. Um, I want, to, want you to focus on a, another aspect here. Imagine this uh, span neighbors activity, this client application was created in .NET, and the backend was created by uh, created using Node.js. Now, uh, if you're propagating the context over the wire, there should be a way of putting this in the HTTP message, right? The HTTP request going through. Exactly. Open telemetry has a standard uh, that it uh, advocates for putting this contextual information in the span context. And when it comes to internally propagating it, this is where your language semantics, so Java, .NET, Node.js, all these languages have their own semantics when it comes to implicit context uh, creation. And when it's internal, that's how uh, context is propagated. When it's over the wire, every uh, 
communication protocol, let's say H major ones, HTTP, uh, MQTT, all of these protocols have a standard on how contextual information for traces are uh, propagated and open telemetry advocates for that. So uh, when it's uh, over the wire, the, there's two things happening that make span A and span B interrelated. One is uh, actually uh, to make this happen, the, there is a concept called instrumentation. So the HTTP client is instrumented at the span A's end, which injects the contextual information to the HTTP requests in the form of headers. If for anyone interested, it's called the W3C trace uh, context. Uh, and on the receiving side, on the Node.js side, the instrumented library needs to extract the context from the incoming request and set set it to span B. That's how that relationship, that's how the handshake happens between uh, the two spans. Uh, and this is done to instrumentation. Right, now, uh, if you remember, I also said that uh, in addition to traces, there were two other types of signals, baggage and metrics. Now, forgetting metrics for a second, baggage is another way of sending additional information about the context. And it uses similar mechanisms of uh, context propagation, but unlike the trace context, baggage is just a collection of key value pairs. I understand this is a lot to take in in a short time. Uh, I'll do a quick demo. Maybe uh, that's the best way to understand it. Uh, I've got that hosted on GitHub for anyone interested, anyone who wants to join in, uh, leave, here, leave it here for a few seconds. And let me open up my Visual Studio project. Here we go. Now, this is, uh, this is an example I've made using .NET. This legit only took me like uh, a day and a half to do. It's very simple, but it shows you how powerful open telemetry is. Um, to start off, I'm going to take an example of a HTTP request going over the wire. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about uh, HTTP is uh, HTTP client is already instrumented in .NET. We just need to opt in, in uh, include, you in, import the NuGet package, opt in. And uh, then I'm exporting, in this case, my telemetry data to Zipkin. Um, and I'll show you how easy it is to create a span. I'm using the .NET activity API to create the uh, span in this case. Uh, for those who are really interested, .NET uh, creates uh, spans using this Activity API. Activity API precedes open telemetry, and the .NET uh, team decided to use the same thing uh, for spans as well. So we set some baggage, uh, set some tags, and send the message over the wire. And th that's what's happening here. And on the other side, uh, we are using open telemetry to set up uh, the tracing in ASP.NET Core and in the values controller, which is the simple endpoint I'm hitting. We are printing the contextual information out. I've put some breakpoints here so we can stop and see what's coming through. Uh, let's uh, let's get that started. So if I uh, simply said the startup projects, I'm not interested in these two for the moment. If I start this up, um, so that's the server, that's the client. We are gonna send a message through and it hits the breakpoint. The, as you can see, the activity is already created. This is the span. Uh, pay attention to the uh, uh, information like the uh, context where we have a trace ID, uh, insert 583E. Now, if you go back, uh, let it run, and uh, now it hits the values controller. And if you look at the activity here, you'll see it might uh, have the trace context where it's got the same trace ID, 583E. So this is powerful because it now uses that context propagation mechanism. So I've got another 
in-process pan created here that's different to the via. I think we looked at this before. I'll let let it run, and now let's go back to um, let's go back to Zipkin and see how that looked. So this is that request coming through. As you can see, we've got the HTTP client making the GET request. It's got some of the tags and some of the events that we created. It, all that rich contextual information, very easy to track and easy to uh, observe. And then. And uh, this is all done through already instrumented libraries. Now, the next thing I want to show you is what happens if you want to use our own protocol. Like, for example, I'm using RabbitMQ, which uh, has a in uh, instrumented library, but I wanted to show you how to uh, how you would go about instrumenting it yourself. Uh, let me quickly show that to you as well. So this is a messaging publisher. So we are constructing the open telemetry uh, thing here. We export to Zipkin. Um, and the important bit here is we create our own propagation context and then hydrate the model going um, model we are sending through RabbitMQ with the trace context information. There's some helper methods that I've created here, but basically it's just injecting the context information. In the HTTP uh, example, we didn't have to do this because uh, the HTTP client library was already instrumented. For this, I'm using a custom instrumentation. I'm just showing you that you can do this yourself. And on the other side, when we get the message, we deserialize it and extract the propagation context. And let's uh, see, this, see this in action. Um, open. So let's uh, send a message through. The same thing happens. Uh, we've got the activity here, and it's got a, a span ID or a trace ID, easy zero. We let it run. And on the other hand, or other side, when we got get the request, we get the propagation context. Uh, and if you look at what we sent through uh, before, like in here, uh, if I go to activity, you'll see that in the contextual information, it's the tr same trace ID. And this is, again, uh, communicating across processes by sending the contextual information. And uh, finally, if you go to the, uh, yeah, I put this to uh, the last minute. This is that message publisher uh, trace. And you can see we've got the events, everything here. Um, you can uh, look at more details if you want. I think I sent some baggage through as well. If it logs it, maybe it's here. Uh, we, the tags we sent through are coming as well. So this is how this is a basic example of how open telemetry can be used uh, to publish tracing information and uh, uh, observe that, and it's very powerful. Let me quickly uh, share back my slides and finish this off. Uh, we looked at uh, demo uh, in the demo the way to construct a span, how uh, the trace, con trace context is propagated, injecting and extracting context and exporting it. Uh, uh, and as you can see, it supports a variety of uh, uh, variety of tools to export to. The message I want everyone to take home is start using open telemetry today. It's no longer a nice to have. You don't have the luxury of being on the cloud without having good observability. Uh, it's It will hit general availability pretty soon, so it's high time you start using this now. And I've got uh, this nice giveaway for uh, 20 people, $50 each to try out Azure. In the meantime, any questions, um, I'm happy to take them. Thanks so much, Dasit. That was it was really a great presentation. Uh, I, I guess one question to start with, and I, I know we're a little short on time, but how can developers and engineers contribute to the Open Telemetry project? How, or how can they be a part of that movement? Right, uh, so good question. Uh, let me 
quickly show you something. So open telemetry project, in this case, the, the, the .NET client, there's always scope for improvement. While doing the demo, I found that some documentation uh, needed updating. It wasn't very clear. Went ahead and sim made a simple pull request to improve it. This is the kind of thing you can do when you get involved in the community. Uh, there's a lot of uh, support and uh, from the in, from cloud providers and vendors, so you can get involved too. Uh, go to the Open Telemetry project, read through the documentation, go check out their SDKs. If you can contribute, please do. So it's a great way to be part of the community. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dasid, and uh, have a great afternoon. Lovely to see you again. Likewise. Thanks, Beck. All right. See you later.